Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good evening. Hey, IG. Hey, Facebook. All right. Give a minute for connections and getting on. It is one minute to seven. I know I'm not always on time, but lately I have been. All right. So give an IG time to let people know I'm on. Hey, Facebook, as you come on, please shout out, say hey, something, let me know who's on. I see one on Facebook. Hope you guys had a great, great day. I had a good day. I had a good day. So let's get, okay. I am here, I am up. Put it here so I can see the comments. Because as y'all know, I'm still trying to get this thing right. All right. So, hey, good evening. Good evening, good evening. IG is telling people that I'm on. Give them time to join. Hey, Facebook. All right. So, it's 7 o'clock. I'm going to get started. I'm going to get started. So good evening. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to Real Life Relationship Growth. And this is Camper Conversations. All right. So for those of you all that don't know, and um, I'm sure there are some that don't know because I have approved uh, probably about 15 new members this week. So I like to get everybody updated. Um, hey, Aisha, what's up, girl? I like to get everybody updated. Um, this is Real Life Relationship Growth, this page. And this segment is called Camper Conversations. So, Camper Conversations, let me give y'all a quick little synopsis, Camper, camper Conversations. Um, last year, about November time frame, possibly, I bought a fifth wheel camper. Um, a fifth wheel uh, trailer um, gorgeous gorgeous it was in gorgeous condition got a wonderful wonderful deal on it couldn't pass it up so I bought one um, went camping only been camping maybe once so far but we have more plan the more I get comfortable with it right um, so I was sitting in my camper one day because I like to go out there it's parked at my daycare center so I like to go out there sometimes and just get away take my little woo or whatever and I thought about, I can do like segments and call it Camper Conversations. And, um, and no, you know, connection necessarily. Hey, Nakara. So, but anyway, Camper Conversations started from the thought of, I can sit in the camper and have conversations, talk about topics and subjects that we get into on this page in this group. And I've been doing it now for several months, going really, really well. Uh, welcome. If it's your first time at Camper Conversations, welcome, welcome. So here we get into topics. We get into subjects. We get into thoughts and facts that are usually posted to the page at some point in time, either during the week or something that may come up that's an interesting topic. And I want to say I always like to give a shout out to my brothers because you all are doing it, communicating, y'all are um, really making yourself a part of this page, and I appreciate it because a lot of times we don't get a lot of men that interact. So I'm going to want to shout out to the brothers, the ones, you know, y'all inbox me, hey Hassani, hey Ron, hey Mike, y'all inbox me and y'all send me things, and the ladies do too, again, I appreciate that, um, you all will send me things to post, um, some thinks it's, uh, you know, may think it's funny. It may be serious topics, um, things like that. But we like to get on here and get real. That's why it's called real life relationship growth. And this is the, um, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to turn this down a little bit because I don't want them to, you know, they hear music. They'd be like, oh, that's not your music. So I'm going to turn that down. 
All right, thanks for noticing the mic. <laughs> so this is the criteria for being a part of real life relationship growth, the group. This is the criteria. You're an adult. You're either single. You're either dating. You're either courting. You're married or you're divorced. If you fall into any of those categories, this is the group for you. This is the hangout spot. This is the place for you. Because on this page, in this group, there are no pretenses. Like, I have none. I put up none. I have no reason. This is real. This is real life. Because at some point in time, what I've gone through, someone else may be going through. Or someone else may end up going through. Or what you have gone through. Hey, Corey. Hey, Chris. What you have gone through, someone else may um, be going through or are going to go through uh, at some point, some type of way. So this page is about uplifting one another. It's about supporting one another. It's about helping one another. Of course, no two situations are exactly the same. And sometimes they are, truth be told. But how you handle things and how I handle things and how Chris may handle things and how Corey may handle things um, are different. How Aisha may handle things are different. But there may be something in something that one of us said or, you know, one of us um, shared how we handled it that you're like, oh, wow, I want to try that. Good, bad, or indifferent. Doesn't matter. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> 745. What's up, lady? I'm glad you made it. Um, so that's why we're here. There, There's no male bashing. There's no female bashing. We don't do that here. That's not what this is. So I do get inboxed sometimes with topics and jokes and things that I feel may be a little too much. And when I say too much, I say I'm saying that may be offensive. Now, I do understand you can't please everybody. I'm not the one that try to please every try to please, excuse me, everyone. But I try to be considerate, right? We have to be considerate of one another, regardless of if we agree with that point or not. So if you send something that's um a bit offensive, if you send something that's um trying to bash the sisters or bash the brother, I'm not going to share it. Just know that. I'm not. I may send you a message and be like, uh ah, Mm, but I may not. Sometimes we may roll past it. So if you find something here that's been helpful and great to you, um, please share and, you know, let me know. Um, I, I've told my children pretty much all their lives. I always like to say this and I say this a lot now. Um, you know, and of course, you know, we all know it came from New Jack City. We know my boy Nima and my, my brother's keeper. I am my brother's keeper. Yes, I am. And we are. That is what we are here for. We are here for one another. God did not create one person to live on this earth. He created us in his likeness. And there are people here that are, are for us. There are people here that are against us. You have to figure that out. But continue to be you. All right, we're going to get started. Because I said I was going to try to hold this to 30 minutes. It has not been happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, but... It hadn't been happening over a good reason because, you know, we get into diving into some topics and it's good. And then sometimes I get ready to log off and somebody will type something. Um, and somebody will type something. Some of us don't have to shoot our shot. All right. Let's just a little icon. Okay. Joel, my Spaniard, he know what that means. He already in it. So let's get it. Let's get it. Our topic. Um, and this is a topic that came from me. Again, everything that goes on the page is not my brainchild. It's not something I'm thinking, I'm dealing with, I'm going through or whatever. I'm posting because someone shared it. They want to get some input on it or they just want to have a laugh or whatever. So, but this one was mine. I thought about this one. Some things just pop up. The topic says, men, have you ever been afraid to shoot your shot to a woman you were really interested in? What made you hesitate or not do it? There are some great responses being posted because I did post this early in the week. And you can go back and see what those um, responses were. I, I'm going to read one in particular, though. 
I'm going to read one in particular. It came from Kevin. But it said, there are some great, okay, there are some great responses being posted. One answer led me to think, are we creating confusing dynamics of roles when it comes to who should initiate first? Are we, are we creating confusing dynamics of roles when it comes to who should initiate first? All right, so... Y'all already got started. Joel is on popping. Joel said just a little eye contact. And I'm assuming that's bam. <laughs> then he says some of us don't have to shoot our shot. Okay, player. Hey, Corey. All right. So Joel says some of us don't have to shoot our shot. Just takes a little bit of eye contact. I want to read to you all. Let me get to it. I'm going to have to go here. I want to read to you all one of the responses that really kind of prompted me to do this tonight. Let me get to it. Y'all know I post a lot on this page. And so sometimes I have to do a little search, search. I should have screenshotted it. Okay. So give me a second, y'all. Okay, here it is. Here it is, here it is, here it is. All right. So, um, Finley commented, uh, who else commented? I want to say Ron commented, uh, boom, 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 boom. Reggie, oh, I think this is what, yeah, Reggie made the comment. Okay, so Reggie made the comment, Reggie said, yeah. He said he wasn't confident enough and didn't feel like she was into him. He found out years later, while he said years later, while I was with someone else, that she was wanting me since the day we first met. So Reggie was like, yeah, he was afraid to shoot his shot because he wasn't confident enough. Just to find out years later um, that she did want him. I said, wow, you don't know how many times I've heard this. I've heard this so, so many times. And then I, and then this is where it comes in at. Um, it speaks to the sometimes confusing dynamics of roles. It speaks to the confusing dynamics of roles. All right, let me get back to the live so I can see what you guys are saying. I don't want to try to miss because it looks like Christopher. Christopher, I call him Smiles. If anybody know Christopher, I call him Smiles. Y'all should understand why. <laughs> but he said, it looks like, okay. All right, so y'all have to bear with me because <clears throat> I don't get all of the comments initially. Some of them come through after I'm done. Hey, beautiful. You've and got I a text see message. them. All right. Um, okay. So Mike said some people are afraid of rejection on both sides. Corey said, nope, folk want you when someone else has you. Ha. Hmm. They want you when someone else gets you, huh? <laughs> Girl. That's a true statement as well. People don't tend to want you until someone else gets you. But let's, let's, you know, stick to the <laughs> point. Thank you, Corey. Um, so, fellas, y'all are here. I see y'all here. I see y'all on here. If y'all don't mind, have you ever been afraid to shoot your shot? Why? Like, have you ever been afraid to shoot your shot? That you were really interested in, but you were hesitant and you did not do it at all. And I think some of us are going to come from the same point of view because that's kind of what I'm seeing the same point of view. Okay. Uh, both people are afraid of rejection. So, okay, Mike said both people are afraid of rejection. And Corey was like, mm, sometimes folks don't want you until they see somebody else have you. So this was addressed to men. And I don't want to over, I don't, I don't want to overdo the men's comments or overshadow the men's comments. But I would like, for you guys to say a little something before we kind of dive in any further. 
because I don't want to, um, I don't want to really take this over. Okay. All right. I'm seeing, I'm seeing. Okay. That was another one. Comment. I'm seeing all these comments, y'all, but let me get on the right page here. Because this is the problem. I'm going to have to play this in order to keep up. All right. Okay. So, um, I had this conversation, of course, once it, the topic was put up. The conversation tends, I, I tend to end up having conversations with people um, about, you know, what was said. And one of the one of the comments that was made to me, and one thing that was said to me was, men, um tend not to show their insecurities as vivid as women do. Um, you know, I, I don't, I, I guess it's a masculine thing. I guess it's a thing of not wanting to feel rejected, look, look like you're being rejected, embarrassment or something like that. But men don't show their insecurities as vividly as women do. Women tend to, um, women are more emotional uh, we deal with our emotions in different ways, but women tend to be more emotional. So being that we're more emotional, we tend to show things in that, of course, in that manner, those emotions come out and we show things in that manner. So men, I truly believe, have just as many insecurities as we do, ladies. I really, really believe that men have just as many insecurities as we do. But to show that, to show that emotion, it's almost like men don't cry. You know, you, you know, the boys get hurt. They fall down. They start crying. Oh, boys don't cry. I hate, 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 hate to hear that. Because first of all, if boys and males did not cry, God would not have created tear ducts in you all, just like he did in us. Tears can be cleansing. Tears are, tears do so many things. I was telling the kids this week about tears and how they work and how they're there to protect our eyes and clean our eyes out. And when we, we feel bad and we feel sad, we tend to have tears and, and they can be cleansing. And I promise you, three and four year olds was like, what? They were engaged and they understood what I said. <laughs> but men tend to shy away from the thought of crying and showing emotion and things like that. So because of that, it, it, it really kind of goes into all other things as well. So when we talking about seeing a young lady, being attracted to her, um, wanting to talk to her, but you don't feel like Reggie said, you don't feel the confidence and you're not sure. Brothers, how many of y'all, y'all don't have to answer out loud. Y'all don't have to type. But how many of you all have missed out on opportunities because of that? Now, let's be honest. I'm not just talking about relational. I'm not talking about as far as man and woman or being attracted to someone. I'm talking about um, not taking a job or, or applying for a job or looking at a position because you didn't feel secure enough. You didn't feel that you had enough knowledge. You didn't feel like you can handle the position and handle the job. How many feel like that or have felt like that? But in this token, what we're, we're speaking on, let's stick with what we're speaking on. How many women have passed you by? How many women have you allowed to get away from you because you didn't feel like you were confident and you were fine enough or you were maybe too big or, or, you know, overweight or, or, or too small or whatever. We all have the same insecurities. We just show them in different ways. We just show them in different ways. Um, another comment that was made, and I really wish I could stay here. I need to find a way to, um, stay with, Stay um, 
with certain things on here so I can kind of keep up and I have to jump back and forth. Y'all bear with me because this thing is, is developing and it's developing it even more and I'm going to get it right. Um, so when we, when we do that, let's see, rejection is probably, is probably huge for most men, especially the ones that lack confidence, that lack confidence. Um, it was said, well, men my age don't try to talk to me. Some say because they thought I was too young. Young guys always try to talk to me, but we don't have much in common. I think that was more of a personal thought process. Great to shoot the shots. Okay. So it was also said, another good question. If a guy you like didn't take a shot, did you tell him? Oh, kind of dove into that a little bit sooner than I wanted to, but let me go with that. So Finley posed that question in, you know, in the, in the post that I made. He said, if a guy you liked didn't take a shot, did you tell him? Ladies, question. Did you tell him? So I responded, um, I responded and I said to him, where is my comment, y'all? All right. So I responded and I said to Finley, I personally don't have a problem. Hey, Rod. Hey, Robert. I don't, I personally don't have a problem letting a man know that I'm feeling him, that I think he's handsome, that I enjoy talking to him and things like that. I don't have that problem. But this is where the dynamics come in, where I feel like we're causing confusing dynamics and we're not sure. Now, I understand that society says, and men feel like that they are the lead and they are the head. And they are. And they are. They were created that way. God created man. Then God created woman. Um, that men are the head. And men are in a role in a position in society as leaders. And they are as leaders. So sometimes, you know, as women, we're taught and we're told, don't say anything. Let the man lead. Let the man speak. Let the man initiate and things like that. But on another token, I hear from some men, I would love for a woman to initiate. I would love for a woman to say to me, she's feeling me and, you know, um, she liked to go out on a date or whatever. And the confusing dynamics of that, where that can come in and be confusing is you have the brother that feels like, mm -mm, if you step to me, then you being too pushy or she's too aggressive or whatever. Okay. Kevin came on and made a comment. I'm going to get you in a sec, Kevin. So some women, some men feel like, oh, she's being too pushy and she's being too aggressive. And that's not what I want. This is the thing. Everybody has their own way. Everybody has their own way. There are certain things that attract me about a man. And there are some things that put me off about a man. And the same thing, vice versa. A man, you know, with a woman. When you get to know somebody, and it's hard to get to know someone because this is talking about shooting that shot and even getting to the point. I am so strong in the thought of being who I am and being myself. People will be attracted to what they're attracted to. If he's attracted to that, who I am and me being myself, then he is. If he's not, he's not. So when we come talking about shooting a shot and the man is shooting a shot and he don't feel very confident, I think there's so many things and so many parts of that that make people shy away. And we have to think about the core purpose of why we're here, how we treat one another, how we deal with one another. You know, if you look a certain way, then you're treated a certain way. If you act a certain way, then you're treated a certain way. Everybody's not going to be attracted to everybody. I understand that. Everybody is not going to want what they see all the time. They have exactly what they want in mind. And that's what they're going to go for. And there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. But how do we make, ladies, the brothers feel more confident 
that they know that they can speak and they can say something to us without feeling like they're going to be rejected. And can we do that? Like, is it possible to really, really do that? I think it's yes and I think it's no. Um, because you have to have that self-confidence for yourself and that has to be built. And that's something that has to be built well before you get to the point of like, oh, I want to get serious with somebody. But we have all been in a place, I think, in life where um, we didn't feel like we were handsome enough or pretty enough. We didn't feel like um, that the person that we liked was not going to like us. You know, you remember in high school when there was this one particular guy and he was the popular guy and he might have been on a football team or whatever, or whatever, basketball, and you had a crush and you liked him, but you were in a different league, so to speak. And the same thing, that girl at school that all the guys liked and everybody wanted to be with, but you didn't feel like you were good enough and you were there at that point to even say anything to anybody. Let me get what Kevin said. Kevin said, because I'm rebuilding myself financially, I didn't talk to a woman because I know finances determine some women's level of interest. Ha, huh. that is a good one, Kevin. And I can understand that. I can understand that. I think men are more, men feel like they're built and how they look. Um, to others based off of their finances, their accomplishments, their achievements. And I can understand that. I can understand that. Because there are expectations. I did say that. There are expectations. Hey, here she go. There are expectations of men. We have expectations of you all. We do. We expect you to be able to provide, protect, and all of those things that fall in there. And when you have those things, it puts you in women's eyes, in a place where we can feel like we can let go and trust you more. So, man, I get it. Y'all have a lot of pressure. I understand that. Y'all have a lot of pressure on you all. Y'all have a lot of pressure. You gone? All right. Okay. Love you. Be safe. She thinks she grown, y'all. <laughs> yeah. You gonna say hi? Hey, y'all. <laughs> Y'all have a lot of y'all have a lot of pressure on you. And I get it, and I can understand. I can understand. Like we we expect so much of you all. But at the same token, the expectations that are so real, the expectations do come from a point of how we're taught. The man is the lead, the man is the head. So how do we get to a point where, how do we get to a point, men, how do y'all get to a point where the confidence is so there and that the ease is so there that you can say and speak and talk to women and, and shoot your shot and put yourself out there and not worry about, and not worry about you know, is she going to reject me? And wor just worry about rejection as a whole. Because let's, let's face it. Reality is, in life, there are going to be rejections. We are going to be rejected. That is just reality. We are going to be rejected in life somewhere at some point. So do we stop? Do we push back? Do we not? Because we feel like, okay, I'm just going to be rejected. Like, how much do we really, really miss out on when we do that? If you guys are commenting, I apologize. I see some here, and then I don't. Um, Trisha, hi, how are you? How are you? So, you know, let's go. I always like to come back for those who just popped on or whatever. The topic was, men, have you ever been afraid to shoot your shot to a woman? you are really interested in what made you hesitate hesitant or not do it at all and are we creating confusing dynamics of roles when it comes to who should initiate first so again i i i've spoken to some men and i see that some men and some men say hey i love when a woman initiates it does it for me 
Kayla said, I would like to see women not be so dismissive out the gate. Like, listen to our story without judgment and some understanding. We're not looking for someone to feel sorry for us, but someone to understand us based on legitimate circumstances. Kevin, thank you. I appreciate that. I love that answer. I love that answer. Because ladies, like, we got to listen. So, I know some women who are so full of themselves, and yes, full of themselves, that if a certain type of brother walks her way, she already, like he said, she's already dismissing him. She's already dismissing him. She's already looking him a certain way and like, I know he's not coming over here. Ooh, and I can't imagine the pressure if she's with her girls and you see her and you want to say something. So, you know, Kevin made a good point and, and I would assume that most of you men kind of agree with this. I would like to see women not be so dismissive out the gate. Every brother I have learned Every brother that I meet is not interested in being in a relationship with me. I think if we realize that from the jump, that it may put us in a different mindset, lady. Every man that you meet does not want you. And vice versa, you know, I got to be fair. Every woman, men that you meet does not want you either. But there's something said for confidence in a brother. There is something to be said about confidence in a man. Like we look for a place we can go to feel comfortable, to feel secure, to feel protected, to feel loved and relaxed. Like who? Y'all seen uh Beauty and the Beast? Y'all seen the Hunchback of Notre Dame? There was some messed up, jacked up brothers. Like the hunchback? How you get a girl? <laughs> Beauty and the Beast? The Beast was nasty and he was mean and he was this. But when his soft side came out, when he realized he could let his guard down, like she got to see exactly who he was in here. And that's what made her fall for him. It did not matter how he looked. It did not matter how he looked. Beauty and the doggone beast, y'all. So, I get and understand. I get and understand, men, that it's a it's it's a deterrent when a woman is dismissive of you, when she doesn't even give you a chance to have a conversation. Like I have some great male friends, I really really do. We can have good conversations. Um. And there's not an expectation or, or, you know, like we're not looking to have anything sexual or whatever with each other. Now, we are grown. If that's something that comes up and that something happens, if there's a mutual attraction, then we're going to talk about that mutual attraction. But I'm not sitting around feeling like every man that speaks to me, every man that likes a post, every man that um, thinks a picture is nice or whatever wants me not thinking or feeling that way but if i don't take the time like kevin mentioned if i don't take the time to even have a conversation with the brother i might miss out on someone really really special i might miss out on a really good friendship or i may miss out on my next man like never know so having a conversation with someone ladies does not necessarily mean that he going to necessarily jump on and hound and, and think, ooh, we together now. Now, reality is, there are some that think and feel that way. But that is called communication. That is called talking. That is being clear, transparent, and honest. And y'all know I'm big on that. I don't see a problem with dating several people. Be safe, I love you. I don't see a problem with with dating several people and when i say dating several people i mean going out to dinner going to a movie i'm um, spending some time because in that process you learn 
what you really like, what you really value, what you really want. You learn um, what's for you and what's not for you. Now, I'm not here to tell anybody grown what to do. If you choose to be sexual with different people, that's your business. But you should be honest about it. So, in the process of, of getting to know people, because, of course, at some point, there is a cutoff and a shutoff. Like, if I'm talking to, say, for instance, three different people, or you're talking to three different women, three different ladies, be honest about that. Like, I have this big thing my grown people don't have to lie. Why? If you find an adult that lies, it's because they're seeking several things. They're seeking attention. They just jacked up. They just want to be that way. They're just that way. And they just really, truly just do not care. They just really, truly do not care. So it's not necessary to do that. So in the process of doing that, ladies and gentlemen, if a man approaches you, ladies, and he wants to have a conversation, you know, like Kevin said, don't be so dismissive. You may, you may create a wonderful friendship. You may create a wonderful friendship. But, you know, we all have to be honest. I think that is also where the problem comes in. Hey, Brian, I think the problem with the con where it comes in is there's so much dishonesty. If we were honest about where we are, where we stood, what we wanted, what we're looking, our intentions or whatever, I think there would be so much, there would be less issues and problems with who should say what, who should speak first. Or who should do this or who should do that. But if we talk, if we want to get into um, gender roles, so to speak, if we want to get into gender roles, um, I personally have found that the man, the men tend to want to be the one to initiate. But ladies, let's be honest. Let's be honest, right? How frustrating. Is it to sit back and wait till the man initiates, wait for the man to, to plan the first do, the, the first date, too many games going on? Exactly, Mike. How frustrating is it to wait? It's frustrating to wait. I'm not going to lie. It is frustrating to wait. If I'm feeling a brother and I've shared that with him, it is frustrating Um. To wait on him to decide mm, when we're going to go out, if we're going to go out, how we're going to go out. Ladies, I, I know y'all understand me on that. Now, I'm not saying rush into anything. This is not about rushing into anything. This is about saying, hey, there's a mutual attraction. There's a mutual attraction. And with that mutual attraction, my brother would call me right now. There's a mutual attraction. And with that mutual attraction, can I say what I like? Or do I have to wait for you to say what you like? Can we both say what we like? Can we both plan something? So this is where the confusion of dynamics of roles come in. Because truth be told, fellas, if you feel like a woman is too pushy, too straightforward or whatever, just like Kevin said, don't be so dismissive of her. Find out what she's all about. And this is the great thing about meeting somebody, y'all. This is about this is the great thing about meeting someone, right? You don't have to stick with that person. It's called getting to know me process. You don't have to stick with that person. Uh, Mr. Leonard said, why wait? If you want something, go get it. I'm with you, brother. I'll high five you on that one. I'm with that. I, if you want something, go get it. This is the point. Why? I mean, this is what happens when you're honest with people. You can move along gracefully. And you can move along with your good name still intact. If I'm dating, if I meet someone and I have an attraction to them and I share that attraction, right? Like the dismissive part, like, like Kevin was saying, 
Why be dismissive of that? If you have a mutual attraction as well. If you have an attraction for me. Who said that we had to end up jumping the broom? Who said that we had to end up in this serious, committed, lockdown relationship until we even get to the point of feeling or thinking that's what we want to do? Why can't adults enjoy adulting? Single adults in that aspect. Single adults. Why can't single adults enjoy adulting in that aspect? Mike said, y'all don't understand how good that makes a brother feel to be approached by a woman. If he's a jerk, keep him moving. But don't miss your blessing. He might be the one, ladies. To see, this is what I'm talking about. When we're talking about the dynamics of roles. Mike is saying... It makes brothers feel good when we approach them. It makes brothers feel good when we um, acknowledge them and let it be known that we're feeling them. Kevin said, well, I paused on going on a date because the woman was dating several dudes at the same time. You can't taste test me, but put me on hold while you sample other cuisines. Kevin, let me, let me tell you my point on that and what I'm saying. My mother told... I have, it's four of us. I would say four of the original crew. And then, you know, we have other siblings that came along. But the four stair steps. My mother told us, um, because I come from a very open household. Like, we, my mother talked to us about everything. She talked to us about sex, um, you know, protecting ourselves and, and all, and dating. She was big on communicating with us with those things because she wanted us to, understand who we were right my mother said date around find out what you like who you like and why you like that truth be told all four of us none of us did that none of us did that and truth be told guess how many of the four of us of my siblings are married to the same people we first started dating None of us. None of us. And let me explain. Let me tell you why I wish I would have listened then. And we talked about this before. I wish I would have listened then because I would have known me. I would have known Donna much, much better. I would have realized what I liked regardless of whatever what somebody was putting out or showing. I would not have just accepted certain things because I felt like pleasing that person was what I was supposed to do. Now understand, pleasing your mate is very crucial and very important. But at the time of choosing, picking where you want to be for the rest of your life, for the person you're going to say I do to, you should know. Why is it that we should have the freedom of choice when we're choosing a car, where we're going to live, the job we take, the food we eat. Why is it that we should have a choice then, but when it comes to dating, we shouldn't have a choice? I'm going to tell you why people feel like that. Because there's so much lying going on. That is why. If people were honest, if people were honest, we wouldn't have a problem with grown adults dating several other people. Now again, I'm not saying, Kevin, and I get your point. I get what you're saying. I I, I kind of felt like that. I'm like, okay, if the brother's talking to me, what what he need to... But let me tell you something. I was told one time, I'm not worried about no other man. Oh, you going out tonight? Okay, enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Let me tell you who I gravitated to. The brother that said to me, you go out and have a good time. Because I'm like, whoa, the confidence that man just showed? Hmm. (laughs) It wasn't cockiness. It wasn't arrogance. It was just confidence. But um, I'm coming to you, Christina. I'm coming because I saw a hey girl. Um, So dating several people, I don't feel like puts one person... um, 
lower than the next person when you're going through the process of figuring it out. But if you're honest, if you're honest, Kevin said, but if a man is dating several women, would you feel comfortable or confident in his words if he's entertaining others? Kevin, I have this thing that I always say. Until we have that come to Jesus meeting, until I say, hey, Kevin, and you say, hey, Donna, this is us. We're going to try this thing. It's just going to be me and you. We're not going to date other people. Until we do that, I should have no expectations for you to sit around and be waiting on me. And you shouldn't have any for me to be sitting around waiting on you. Because if you can't make your mind up or I can't make my mind up, what what that's when you get frustrated and confused and anger and hurt comes in. Because you 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 feel like, oh, okay, well he showed me a bit of attention. I tell my girls all the time, we've had this conversation. Um, oh, men do this and men do that, and 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 trust and believe there's some people that are grimy, male or female. But men of this and men of that and they cheat. And my question is, oh, so y'all must have had that conversation. Like what conversation? That y'all were just going to be with one another. You were going to be, you know, committed to just be seeing and being with one another. No, we didn't have that conversation. So how is he a dog? How is he a cheater? I don't understand that. Like there's no... There's no committed connection there. He's an adult. You're an adult. Why are you sitting waiting if y'all haven't even decided or even know if you are for him or he is for you? Uh, Christina said, is he dating them or having sex with all of them? Let me tell you, Christina, my answer to that is that's his business. Because guess what he's not doing? He ain't having sex with me. That's we can only control what we do. We can only control ourselves. If this brother or this sister is sleeping and having sex with everybody that they're going out on dates with, that they're taking to dinner, they're going to the movies with, or whatever, that's their whole business. That is not mine. Because if I'm one of the people that he's taken to dinner and, and going to the movies with or, or, or going to concerts or whatever, if I go back with him to his place or he come back with me to my place or we choose to be in a place together and we choose to have sex, that is grown people decisions. But if I'm not sure where I even stand with this brother, why am I having sex with him? adulting that's what this thing is called so this is us putting our stock and trust in other people that should be the conversation up front the conversation up front it it, it should be and y'all please understand i believe in trust and monogamy and commitment and i i do i love that i want that i thought at one point i had that but reality said that is not what his intentions were, was. And I made a decision, Christina, for me. I exited stage left because you said something that you didn't mean. You weren't honest. So I made a decision for me and I exited stage left because I'm worth so much more so much more y'all i have not always been here i've said this before it's a it's a thing of confidence if we have and the majority of us do have young boys young girls that we call our children and we are not boosting their confidence and hyping them up and teaching them that they are the best thing since sliced bread they're gonna get with the first guy they're gonna get with the first girl because dudes do it too in certain aspects, different than ours, but it's the same emotion. It's just, it comes out different. If we don't teach them how great and special they are, they are going to get in this rut of feeling like, 
I got to be this. I got to be that. I got to do this and I got to do that. And I got to. And, and we, I mean, I get peer pressure. I get growing up and, and feeling and, and children can be mean and direct and ugly. I get that. But if you build that confidence in your children, they won't end up like we did and have to fight as an, as an adult to figure out who we are. Now that's my personal. I don't know about you. But I am learning. I will be 50 on March 8th, y'all. Yo, put a plug in. My party is next weekend. Woo. Oh, listen, if you a friend of mine and you have not RSVP for the silent party, it's going to be some serious. I, I promise you. I pr Yo, we're going to have such a good time. Let me get back to it. But it wasn't automatic. Like, the biggest thing I had going for me, I felt, y'all, when I was young, is I was a baller. Like, give me a basketball? Oh, psh, you say nothing to me. I will, whatever. My confidence was there. I come out on the court and talk no trash. I didn't talk trash. I would be nice to everybody. Be like, hey, girl, sneakers are dope. What, you, what position? Oh, okay. And then I'm like, ha. That was what it was. <laughs> but the confidence was not there. It's something that built over time. It's something that I had to go through kissing some frogs and dealing with some dogs to realize I'm worth so much more. But let me tell y'all, the main thing that got me here and is still boosting and growing is I got a father in heaven that told me I was number one. And I finally started believing it. Y'all, I don't care what a brother say. I don't care what a man says, what he likes, what he don't like, what this and that and this. If you can't tell me nothing more than my daddy done told me, don't matter. If you can't accept me for who he's made me to be and who I know sin has tapered down on me and I'm getting better with and I'm growing with, then you're not for me. All right. Kevin said, I think my issue is that I date with intention. I pretty much know what I want. So I guess while I'm in the desert, LOL, I'm over 50, so I don't need a variety. I need that sweet potato pie, baking, good love making, Timberland wearing sister now. <laughs> it's a not, it's a New York thing. I hear you on the Tims, Kevin. I should have known. Yes, bruh. But I understand, Kev. I understand exactly what you're saying. But still, I just have to hone in on the point. How do you even know who that person is? And dating with intention does not mean you are not dating several people. That is dating with intention. Look at the definition on that. Look at the intention. You're intentionally doing something. I'm intentionally dating because I want to be with that brother that checks my boxes and that I realize and know that God has sent and prepared me for. Because I truly believe in God preparing a woman for her man. Y'all can argue that if y'all want. I believe in God preparing her woman for a man. I do believe as well that a man is prepared. It goes both ways. But what I'm saying is I want to be in position and ready. And that to me is dating with intention. Me being honest with you is dating with intention. I'm intentionally telling you that, hey, Kevin, not, I mean, you know, not talking about you, Kevin, but just making an example, sorry. But I'm intentionally saying, Bob, that, hey, I really like you. I enjoy spending time with you. When can we see each other again? That's what I said. Do I have to tell Bob I have a date with David or Jim or Philip? Like, do I have to tell him that? Why am I telling him that? Because if it's, if it is, me at a point trying to choose and decide, I have that choice. Just like you have that choice. 
But if 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 Bob says to me, "Hey, um, saw you with David the other day. You and David, you know, I didn't know you knew David or whatever. Or I saw you with a guy the other day. Um, is that your man or or? Oh no, Bob, it's not my man. That's that's David. David and I went out. Uh, we went to dinner. Um, he's not my boyfriend. He's not my man. David is a friend just like you are, Bob. What's wrong with that? I was just honest with Bob. I completely told him where things were. This is where the problem would come in. If I realized I was feeling David, and David and I had a conversation, and I'm on the fence, and Bob asked me, I don't know who David is. No, that ain't nobody. Or David said to me, hey, you know, I would really like to, and I'm like, oh, Bob? Like, who is Bob? That's lying. That's where the problem comes in. I am intentionally positioning myself for the man that I want to be with. And if I realize that Bob is not the man, if I realize that Bob has some traits and some ways, some 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 things that I know aren't for me, then I'm going to be honest and tell Bob. And then David would have no question of where he stands. We have rights. We have it, it's 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 freedom of choice, you all. We just have to be honest. So back to the point of of the the topic, men shooting their shot. You you. The confidence has to be there. The knowing myself has to be there. This falls right perfect because if a man knows himself, if he knows himself, he's more confident in him in himself. That brother that said to me, have a good time. I'll talk to you later. It, <laughs> it made me draw closer and more to him because I appreciated the confidence. I liked the confidence. And it made me realize I could feel safe over here. Uh, Kevin said, if you say you want to spend more time, that would signal to me you have a budding interest. So as a man, I'm putting the brakes on dating so I could get a better understanding of where you're coming from. I'd expect the woman to do the same. Yes, Kevin, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If the interest, if there's a budding interest and I realize I want to spend more time with David, then I'm going to gravitate more to David. But I'm going to be honest with Bob about that. Excuse me. Bob is going to know that. We're not going to play games. We're not going to play games. Christina said, I feel like men are conquerors and therefore do not like the idea of a woman. They are trying to conquer dating multiple prospects. Oh, I get it. I truly understand that, Christina. And I get that. I get that men um, are conquerors. They are driven by what they can capture, overcome, what they can, you know, I always say the pissing contest, like, whose stuff is bigger? Who, you know, like, I, I watch the boys on the playground, right, at the daycare, compared to the girls. The boys are pushing and shoving and running and trying to get on top of each other and want to see who could. It is natural from birth, I really believe. In males, that testosterone just has them, so as they get older and older, they want to conquer everything they see that they want. That includes us. That includes us. The girls are on the playground, and they're playing beside each other, and they're, they're, and they're you know, I do have some girls that's out there, and they aggressive, and they playing, and they, you know, they out there running with the boys, and they don't care. Doesn't matter. But what I'm saying is, they do end up, you know, the girls, they playing, they, they're doing the more, um, you know, girls are more, what word am I looking for? 
and I do this every day, y'all, as an educator, how do I not know what word I'm looking for? Tamika, you on here, you a teacher, what word am I looking for? <laughs> but anyway, the boys are more aggressive, and they're capturing, they're, 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 they're running to see who's the fastest or whatever, and the girls are more over, and they're, they're talking, and they're building things that, you know, they're, they're, they're just, they're just, they're not worried about who runs faster or who, so, so males, it's already innately in them to be conquerors. So I do understand a man feeling like if, if oh, you talking to another dude, then you go ahead and do that. You go be over there. You could have missed out on the best woman you could have ever, because let me tell you what that does for a woman, men. Let me say this. If I'm dating, going to dinner, not sexting, not having sex with everybody, that's just me personally. If I'm going out on dates with several guys, right? And you show me and you say, hey, I want to take you out or I want to do this. I want to spend time. I want to do that. And I see your interest. Because we like to be wooed. We like to show, we like to know that you want us. We like to feel wanted and desired and needed and thought about. That good morning text. Well, the good morning text. That my day is rough. I'm having a hard day. I just wanted to hear your voice. Five minute lunch break conversation. That, um, I am thinking about you. I know we haven't spoken all week. Work's been busy. Like, that's what's going to gravitate us. That's what... Y'all talking about being conquerors? As a man, if you are trying to conquer a sister, you can pull her from every brother. I don't care who he is, how he is, and what he's saying, how he look. If you give her that time, attention, affection that she needs if you make her feel like she is the only woman in the world if that's what you want when ego and pride steps in just my personal opinion ego and pride step in when you say oh you gotta go out on a date with this one you seeing more than one person all right well you gonna be over that in oh, okay you ain't trying then you're not trying because let's let's be honest y'all Let's be honest. We're not going to lie about this thing. Honesty says you want to be sought after. Everybody wants to be sought after. Everybody wants to feel that feeling, those butterflies, that, ooh, that person made me feel like that. Everybody wants that. So if you're a brother that says, I am not chasing no woman or whatever, you are fighting your natural instinct. Of what is put in you. If you are not chasing. Fellas. You are fighting. The natural that was put in you. Because you are created to be. A conqueror. Now if you take it. In a in a negative. Aspect. Then you got some other stuff to work on. Can we just realize. We are here for one another. And we need one another. Got to. Adam, and Adam was like lonely, and he, and he created four, <laughs> so we, we confusing the dynamics of what, so brothers, approach that lady, like, approach that woman, I mean, if you really interested, you gonna stand back a little bit and you gonna watch. And you're going to figure out how to approach her. And you're going to understand what she needs eventually for you to get more in and more in and more in and more in, deeper and deeper and deeper um, with her. So that mutual will happen. And them other ones don't matter if that's what is done. So please understand Dating more than one person does not mean that you're not being intentional. I'm sorry, Kevin. I can't agree with that. 
I don't think it's not being intentional. Ron said most men appreciate the woman that he pursues and gets much more because he put in the work. If you don't say it, brother, big man. Yeah, that's big man. Big man. That's what I'm talking about. I truly believe that. Because even before you thought about a female, you was trying to beat the brother, the other on the playground. You was trying to throw the football further. You was trying to see who can hit harder on the gridiron. You was trying to see that three-pointer. Like, that's me, man. I'm the three-point king. So y'all are created to be conquerors, brother. So you going to give up and not try to get the point guard position because somebody else playing it? Come on. Wait a minute. Come on. <laughs> you going to give up? Because 50 dudes tried out, came for tryouts. You gonna say, oh, I ain't playing. It's too many of them. Oh, the coach wanna, wanna see all of them. Oh, I ain't even coming out here. Come on. <laughs> Yo. Yo, it's eight o'clock and this thing is like getting fired for me. Okay. Well, we gonna go. We gonna wrap this up, y'all. We gonna wrap this up. So men. Men, here we go. Here's my plug because y'all know I'm going to say it. Counseling is the best gift you can give to yourself because it's the gift that keeps on giving. Counseling is the best gift that you can give to yourself. It gives for you. It gives for the people around you. It gives for the broken relationships. It gives for the abuse it gives for the neglect it gives for the i don't feel so good counseling is the gift that keeps on giving if you don't feel confident enough in yourself to get that job to get that whatever it is you're going for then look at where you're coming from Look at where your confidence is and why it's there. Counseling is the gift that keeps on giving. If I'm telling y'all, if I could be a poster child, I would be. Counseling. I love, love, love it. I love, love, love it. <laughs> Kevin said, till next time. Till next time, Kevin. I appreciate you. Kevin gives a lot of feedback. He's with Kevin and Ron and Finley and my brother Mike. Hey, Christine, I was glad you're here today. Hey, um, Miss Williamson. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. All right, y'all. So I'm going to wrap it up because I have gone over. But please, please, please send your topics, send your thoughts. Keep posting. Keep sending me things to post. I love this page. I love what it's doing. It's, it's doing just, uh, I mean, as much for me as I hope it's doing for y'all, but it's, it's doing, I, I love you all. We have a great time here. Um, just know this is a safe place. This is a no judgment zone. Now there are 1.6 K members in this group. And at a given time, there could be maybe a hundred people that interact, but may not say anything or post anything. I, I was able to see, I'm able to see that as the administ as the admin, I'm able to see that. So every video that I have posted, you guys, after it's done and over with, I always pin them to the top so you can go back and watch and still comment because I had people commenting all week about a topic we did last weekend. But every video is posted. So you're welcome to go and comment and say things and give your input. Um... And, it, and when I go on there, today the video from last week had 262 views. And I think that's great. And that's not a bragging thing. That's just saying that prayerfully, something that was said in the video that came from you all or from myself helped someone else. Because that's what this is all about. Be grateful. I love this shirt. Be grateful. All right, y'all. Y'all have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family. Love on somebody this weekend. Like, 
I'm not talking about go having sex necessarily. But if that's your way of loving on somebody, then you do that and do it well, okay? But have fun. Love on someone. Um, see y'all during the week. Make y'all post. Uh, enjoy tonight. Love you, Dad. Love you, Christina. Hey, uh, Christina, I didn't see you on the RSVP uh, for next weekend. Y'all, go RSVP. Please, I want y'all to come and celebrate my 50th with me because it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. We doing a silent party. For those of y'all who have never been to a silent party, two DJs, headphones, that's all I'm saying. So y'all still have time if y'all want to RSVP. All right? I love y'all. Talk to y'all later. And here we go again. I always have to figure out how to stop IG. I'll get this in a minute. I think it's this X right here. Later, IG. Yup. That was it. Oh, I think. Wait. In now. And share. And I got a right caption. Ooh, IG doing a lot. All right, Facebook. Love you all. See y'all later.